Welcome. This is 30 Minutes of Truth for Life with Pastor Poole, pastor of the Bethesda Baptist Church located in Muskegon, Michigan. Join Bethesda each week on this station as we meet the challenge of change through Truth for Life. And now, Pastor Poole. That's a decent question for us to begin our proclamation today. The question comes from this Philippian chapter 4, and the words there that the apostle uh, directs to the church. This was a time of the early church, and Paul had been giving uh, instructions about what needed to be done in their lives. And there were two women who had uh, some um, contentions uh, between each other. And Paul had not spoken so favorably uh, early on about what was going on there in Philippi among these women. But when we read the text in the fourth chapter here, we get an understanding that where Paul was concerned and what he wanted others to recognize was that there is joy in the Lord always. Joy in the Lord always. And uh, he says, I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. And in a sense, he was trying to get them to understand that what he had been saying about their situation was not to be held on to as something that was going to separate them forever or keep the church in a flux because there was discussion about it. He says, do not be anxious for anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God, which transcends all understanding. If you'll turn off your phone. I think one of us speaking is enough. Will guard hearts and your mind in Jesus Christ. Rejoice in the Lord. And I want to begin by saying, too often, those of us who declare that we are followers of Jesus Christ allow the things of the world to disrupt us and cause us to have less than joy in the work of the church. That's the first point I want to make today. That too often we get involved with each other and get lost in our own personal desires and therefore disrupt what is important to the work of the church. These ladies they don't really give what it was all about, but they were disturbed. And because they were disturbed, they disturbed others. And others could not perform as they should have performed because they were tied down with the disturbance of these women. 
But listen to the apostle. He says, rejoice in the Lord. And he says, I want to put emphasis on it. I'll say it again. Let your evident, your, your gentleness be evident to all. That word gentleness, which has reference to whatever the argument was that had created the hostility that was between the women. You should not be hanging on to that harshness. You ought to recognize who you are and be gentle. There's a time to put away stuff. Put away those things that separate us and recognize who we belong to and what our purpose is for our lives. Yes. He says, don't be anxious for anything. Yes. Because many times it is our anxieties about our own positions that separate us. We don't hear the Lord. All right. We're only concerned with what we want. Mm -hmm. And because of our concern being so narrowed, then we lose the sense of what it means to be in the body of Christ. That all of us together are working for the purposes of God and not ourselves. Haven't you had some discomfortable, some uncomfortable days? Didn't have to be here. Could be in the school, in your family. There have been times when people have done things that you didn't like. But it, it shouldn't destroy your life. Amen. Amen. It shouldn't separate you and cause you to feel that you can't be a friend to someone. That's not the purpose. The Lord is near. He is a part of everything that goes on. In the study, something came up and I said, you know what my answer is? The Lord is in control. No matter how difficult it may seem to us, God is still in control. There is nothing that he doesn't handle. Well, how do you say that? Well, how can I say that from the foundation of the world, yeah. he had his plan? Yeah. That he knew from the beginning yeah. what the end was going to be. Yeah. That he understood what it would take yeah. to make what he desired of this world to be his. And because he understood it, Paul could say now, rejoice. Yeah. Don't lose your enthusiasm. Don't get all upset because it didn't go your way. All right. Don't look for some other alternative. Still believe in God for what he has called you to do. And the purpose for which he has called you to do it. And be anxious for it. Isn't it a shame how the churches across the land seem to have lost their anxiety about following the word of God? People are going around talking about truth is me. Not God. Truth is me. Whatever I state is, that's the thing that has value. Don't 
Don't be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Is there anything that God can't solve? Is there anything that God can't take care of? Is there anything that God cannot supply? This is his world. And we're his creation. And it is his plan that even though as foolish as our forebears were, that he would make a way for us to still have the privilege of eternal life. He didn't let us down. He made a way for us. What was necessary to bring us through, he provided that. He provided it in his son, Jesus Christ. I need some blood. I need somebody to die. But it wasn't too much to do. In everything, in everything, let your request be known. And let God handle it. In everything, let your request be known and let God handle it. In that next verse that I want to cite, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, Whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about it. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me, or even in me, or seen in me, put it into practice. Now, why do you think the apostle was trying to allay the situation between those women with those words? Whatever is admirable, he had to look at his own life. And some of the the decisions that he made about admirability. And don't 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 we put some 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 real high stakes on things that aren't worth anything? (laughs) Not worth a dime. But we put high stakes on it. And we're willing to mess up everything and everybody in order to get it to to happen. No, no. No, no. That's not the way it is done. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, Think on such things. Did you hear what I said? Whatever is good, don't go get the bad and make a great big conversation about that. Get the good. Raise it up. Help folk to see how wonderful it is. Don't tear people down or things down, wait on the Lord. And the Lord will renew your ability to understand that he is in control of this world. Yes, 
you wouldn't have the sense that you have today if some things hadn't gone wrong. Because you had to suffer through some darkness. Some lack of intelligence, some weakness. The Lord fixed it. The Lord set it right. You didn't. The Lord set it right. That's what Paul was talking about where these women were concerned. I don't I can't see what's gonna be tomorrow, but he knows. I can't change you, but he can. You'll probably have a hard time trying to change me, but he can. And he won't have a hard time. All he needs to do is pull a plug. And the change will come. Well, What's on your mind? Get to my point real quick here. What's on your mind? Is it this world or is it the kingdom of God? What's on your mind? Is it life or death? What's on your mind? Is it being great and pushing everybody else aside? What's on your mind? Having a lot of money and things in this world? What's on your mind? Scripture tells you. The word tells you. Let the thoughts of Jesus Christ flood your life. Yes. Amen. Let what Christ desires flood your life. And in order to do that, you've got to surrender yourself. Yes. That only happens when we surrender and lay prostrate before him to receive what he has for us. There are too many of us who are in the physical church who are not in the spiritual church. There are many of us who are talking about ruling on earth and not being one in heaven. Too many of us have failed to transfer our citizenship from this world to the kingdom of God. We're trying to act like citizens over there when indeed we're still citizens of this world. And when I say we're still citizens of this world, and that means that the majority of what goes on in the world takes our attention. How do we expect for the kingdom of God to become a reality to us? 
Do we recognize that there's some essential preparation? Yes, what's on your mind? Let this be on your mind, which was in Christ Jesus. What was in his mind was satisfying the Father. Amen. That was, that, that's what was in the mind of Jesus. Yes. To satisfy his Father. Amen. His Father had directed him to a work. And he wasn't out trying to see how he could get around it. He gave his whole self yes, so that the work that the Father had called him for would be completed. There was no other way to complete the work except to give his whole self. There's no other way for you to become truly God's child except releasing your whole self. Amen. And in order to give your whole self, you have to stand firm Amen. in your belief in Jesus Christ. You can't let anybody lead you off into some ism and make it. You've got to stand firm in the word. The word has got to be your guide. And no matter how hard it may be, you have got to believe that God will give you strength. To do whatever is necessary. Through the apostle's voice today, all we are saying to you is, if you know the Lord, stand firm in him. Don't be changed by every whim and every doctrine. In our Bible study last Wednesday, a part of what was mentioned and discussed was the fact that many people now go around selecting the church. They have forgotten that you haven't chosen anything. God chose you. God chose you. He chose to have your sins forgiven. He chose to have his son die. He chose to make a kingdom for you. He chose to set a time when your work would be done. He chose to have a place for you forever. Paul didn't warn the Philippian church about any doctrine. He simply warned them about trying to go it without God. And if you're around here trying to go it on you, you're headed for a terrible fall. I'm finished in these words. It's easy here to preach than it is to do what is preached. <laughs> but it's not until you have been transformed 
until transition has taken place in your life, will you and I be secure? It's not enough just to hear the word, but you've got to do the word. You've got to put it in practice. And putting it in practice is not looking at me and grinning. Putting it in practice is being real. I'm serving the Lord. You need to serve the Lord, not people. But serve the Lord. The Lord has your course laid out. Serve him. Do right. Put into practice the love that he has demonstrated for you. It's not an easy road, but in the Lord's hands and his direction, you will make it. My final word, stand firm. Don't let nobody push you off into some ditch. If you're a Christian, put being a Christian into practice. Yeah. Don't just tell me, well, I read my devotion. Let your devotion be seen in you. about what you're putting in your mind. Sometimes we unthinkingly have 24 hours of junk. We think it don't affect us. Turn on the TV. All kind of junk is on. 